16 point lead to the Sydney Swans, an important game for them this evening here at the Sydney Cricket Ground and the second half about to get underway. Tigers hanging in there as they did in round two, hung in all day and then surprised everyone by hitting the lead halfway through the last term. Sydney getting home in round two at the MCG by 16 points. Barry Hall so far tonight has four. Everett starting the ruck against Simmons. And the ball up. Everett and Simmons both at palm on it. Secondary knock by Simmons, free, and it'll go to Tuck. So the yeah. Tigers, the early clearance. Jude Bolton just had hold of uh, Tuck's jumper, just retarded him from going towards the ball. Short, Edwards. Open forward line at the moment, now the Swans getting players back. Possession number 11 for Shane Edwards, been very lively in the first half. Had a career high of 18 possessions last week, so he's running into a uh, fair vein of form. Heads to Bowden, he pops it inside 50, Revolt comes late, away from Bevan, McGuan, Foley, handball stolen by Matt Chesky to McVeigh to the boundary line, will get a ball in, Lee Colbert. Barry Hall's getting matched up by young McGuan again, you'd think uh, Graham Polak boys would be a, a better matchup given his experience down back. Your thoughts on that one gentlemen? Well. It's a matter of necessity, I guess. He's uh, he's picking up Jolly, who's playing deep. We saw Everett start there deep in the first quarter and kick two early goals, so obviously worried about the height factor. Yeah, I think Bowden's the, the one that's surprising, though. He goes to Hall and been quite good on Hall on a number of occasions. Kane Pettifer, too far out to score. He's got Richardson short. Goes short turn, finds Simmons on 50. Nearly kick it with his uh, best effort. He'll kick from just outside the 50-metre arc. Only kicked the one goal this year, Troy Simmons. Just needs something to go for them, a, a difficult kick, a, a nice start, just to get a little bit of momentum, the Tigers. That, to their credit, their attitude and their uh, endeavour tonight has been first class. Tough kick. That's what he has in front of him. And that's why he's only kicked one goal this year. And they have a lot of a lot of their shots from out on that four, uh, that 50 metre line. It's not where ideally you want to be having your shots. Last week, out of the goals they kicked, nine of their shots were from outside 40. It's not a high percentage. I mean, it's good if you can kick them from out there, but you want to be having your shots from you know 25, 30 metres out. Ty Canelli runs from the back pocket, short, good spoil, fist from first field, dumped out of play. Richmond have just been seem to have been hesitant going to Matthew Richardson deep. They just seem to be uh, going shorter around the 50 metre mark to other options. And Richo has been left deep pretty all by himself or double teamed, but uh, they won't kick the ball to him at the moment. Brown to Edwards, another possession. Feeds it off to Pettifer. Not a lot to go to. Pops it up to Richardson. Got a hand on it. Gathers the crumb. A chance here, Richo. Sizes them up and sprays it. Yet to kick a goal tonight. Well, it's a couple of opportunities to start this second half the right way, the Tigers. But again, foot skills just killing them. We saw a fantastic spoil a couple of moments ago from Will Thursfield on Michael O'Loughlin. He's done a tremendous job tonight. O'Loughlin's had just the three possessions, two kicks, no score at this stage. That's a tremendous effort. And he's in, he is quite didn't have a possession in that second quarter, so uh, great effort. McVeigh gets it from Malcheski. Chip kick wide. No, another notable player for the Sydney Swans who didn't have a touch in the second quarter was Nick Malcheski, mm. and he's held to three at the half time mark along with Everett. O'Loughlin got it from Buchanan to Matthews. Tigers getting numbers back. Matthews, not a lot to go to. Pumps it long, jolly. And he marked it between his legs. Yeah. It was a party trick. Was there a push out there at any stage with the arm as well? Well, that was the forearm. I mean, um, that's uh, the, not the interpretation we've been talking about uh, earlier in the day. No, I'm just talking about a normal back. push out. Just that a normal one. push in the back. It uh, certainly he was, eased his oh. player forward. Gee, you can't do that, surely. They, uh, <laughs> look, they've been a little bit lucky, the Swans. They've picked up three that have gone their way. Good luck to them. Darren Jolly loads up, and hits it, it well, 
And it's gone all the way. That hurts big time. Well, as you said, Jay, as long as they're consistent and the players will pick up on the interpretation of the day. And uh, as we said, it wasn't the hands in the back. It was a decent forearm to the back. And uh, yeah, you got to make most of the opportunities if you get them. And Darren Jolly, very good ruckman and certainly one that can go forward and kick goals. Smart one-hander in the end and uh, very effective kick from uh, outside 50. The usual reward for kicking a goal, Darren Jolly straight off the ground, but hasn't it worked well for them starting both halves? Two goals early on in the first quarter of Everett and now one to Jolly. And a very fortunate one at that. Bevan slipped the handball out but missed the target. Kane Johnson and captain court going nowhere and we'll get a ball up game number 197 tonight for kane johnson had the same amount of possessions last week as greg tivendale 23 but tivendale was dropped from the ball up jude bolton handball out but straight to edwards handball further back from foley to polak court kelvin moore King, tough half volley, clean ball in. Barry Hall got it from Schneider, gives it to Everett, sizes it up from 50, goes long. Moore gets back, got a touch on it. And behind. I'm glad he got back because it was his kick to put them under pressure. You've really got to hit the target when you're switching it across the face of goals. Quick kick in from fullback, Tuck. He's got Tambling out wide. Didn't have a Heap of possessions, didn't dominate last week in the reserves, Richard Tamling, but led with attitude and back into the lineup this evening. Oh, Reigns, it was, but he measured it well, Bowden. Now straight down the middle, lead comes, Nathan Brown, good hands. Good hard lead at the ball and beautiful pass. There's an enormous amount of pressure from the defender there, but uh, that's a good mark from a small forward. So he got a generous mark from the umpire as well, who's pulled him, uh, pulled him back almost to about 45 metres. I thought he took it only a, a step inside the attacking 50, so this brings him right into range. Well, this extra two metres might be just what he needed. He loads up and kicks his third. That's good for the Tigers. Nathan Brown, he's been exciting tonight and uh, certainly does some different things. This is very talented, the way he's strong hands under pressure to take that mark. But he's led from the front. He's brought the players in at half-time. He's had a chat to them. He's used his, his experience to his younger players to get them up and going when they're taking on a much more experienced team in the Sydney Swans. And that is what good leadership is all about. When you have to go back, to go back and kick the goal, that's a good effort. Three goals to Nathan Brown. 66 plays, 49. From the ball up, Everett. Kane Johnson tried to kick it off the deck. Jude Bolton picked it up and kicked it inside, 50. O'Keefe. From 45. Sees here. Davis. Oh, well well done. Done. Great mark. Davis used the hands. But Newman held his ground. He's been one of their best tonight, Chris Newman. He's done a super job on Nick Davis. Just the one goal to Davis from a handful of touches. And Newman's given great run, picking up possession 16. Simmons can't get a fly at it. McGuan didn't knock it away from Barry Hall. The mark's played. So four goals for the night, Barry Hall. Luke McGuan rattled his cage in the second term and he fired up by knocking him over and kicking three goals in a row. <laughs> They've given the forwards a bit of leeway tonight, haven't they, to get rid of their opponents? Well, that's supposed to be within five metres, isn't it? He just... Yeah, well and truly, uh, the ball wasn't within five metres, but, yeah, got rid of him nicely and found Davis. Oh, I lock on to Davis. That's just too easy. It wasn't. That's the first uh, mistake that Newman's made. Well, and the, the reason he's looking around, though, Lynch, is because he had to follow Ryan O'Keefe, who'd led into space, and, and exactly. he, he was prepared to sacrifice his own game, but no-one covered for him. And there's nothing worse than that situation. He's been very good, has refused to give up front position and has uh, contested very well throughout the night. He doesn't want to hurt here on the scoreboard with a goal to Davis. 
You mentioned earlier on how accurate he is. 19 goals, 8 for the year. He's now got 20 goals, 8. For all their hard work, Richmond, they continue to find themselves in a little bit of trouble. You can just see here. He tried to punch from behind. Maybe a lucky mark. Didn't seem to hold it for a long period of time. But then there was nice space to lead into. You saw O'Loughlin getting rid of his opponent. He chips over. You can see Newman. He was in the front of that shot there. He got called up to Ryan O'Keefe. And he's looking around saying, hang on, I covered someone. What about someone giving me a chop out? It didn't come. Davis kicks his second. Two goals now for Nick Davis. It's some contentious push-outs by forwards tonight. But if anyone knows the rules, it's Nick Davis. His father, Craig, the director of umpiring in New South Wales for about a decade up here. Free kick out of the middle. Simmons. Reigns. Chip kick to Brown. Terrible kick over his head. Pettifer. 45 from goal. Oh, Looks up. Loads up. Loads up. And goes off. And and gorgeous. <laughs> well, he must have already got the message that he's going off, so he thought, I'll have a ping at this. He did look around to see if there was any open targets, and uh, that's a very handy snap. Probably not uh, exactly what uh, the coach would ask, but uh, didn't hit the top of the goal square. Very handy. We know Kane Pettifer can do this. He can kick him from all sorts of angles, and that's just what the Tigers needed to keep them in it. As a chat to the coach. Game number 98 for Kane Pettifer, and he's on the phone, Lee Colbert. You were coming to the ground for the first time to watch an AFL game, and you saw a guy kick a goal, and then he comes off. you think that was <laughs> part of the rules. Just proves that rotation's all about time on the ground now. Nothing to do with form. <laughs> Newman offloaded by Goods. King caught by Schneider. Dropped it. Schmidt goes in. Half lead. Kirk. McVeigh. Richmond player in trouble. Chip kick inside 50. Cut off by Polak. Newman still down in the hands of Trainers. Turnover on the wing. King. Cleve Hughes. Caught. Gone. Oh, All over. Well, that's just taking a ridiculous amount of time. You've got to think that you're going to be put under pressure at some stage. It's Reigns is in all sorts of trouble here. You can see him attacking the foot. He just gets a solid bump from Jude Bolton. Could have been I a clash know. of heads there yeah. as well. Richards. Heads wide towards Adam Goods. He missed it. He's dumped and he's down now. Polak. Long towards Richardson. At it with one hand. Can't take the mark. Can't go to the crumb. Craig Bolton. Mount Chesky, Kirk, they're diving in the Tigers, they've still got a sniff here, oh. Edwards' is handball atrocious, and Cracker into the shoulders of Ted Richards' free kick. And that's the thing, is just continually letting the Tigers down, just those sort of skill errors under pressure, turn been, the ball over too easily. Been a lot of talk in the last couple of weeks about teams tanking, no need to worry about that. With Richmond, the Tigers could win two more games this season and still finish bottom. Couple of games behind, second last on the ladder. Jolly. He slips a handle over the top. Mount Chesky, trademark down the corridor. Long ball, O'Keefe. <laughs> Equal second in the best and fairest last year, Ryan O'Keefe behind the Brownlow winner Adam Goods. So coming off a spectacular season, the Jim Steins medal is the best for Australia against Ireland. He got three Brownlow votes against Richmond round seven last year at the Telstra Dome. One of the unsung superstars of the competition, Ryan O'Keefe. Lines up from 45. Splits the middle. He's a class player, Ryan O'Keefe, just chalking up the numbers now. That's 13 possessions. He's had six marks, covers plenty of territory now, kicked a couple of goals. He is just a workhorse, but a classy workhorse. And we've seen him take a couple of marks from behind. This one from out in front. He gets them on the lead. He can get them off the deck. A very, very complete running half forward, Ryan O'Keefe.
16 goals for the season. Played all 16 games. Ryan O'Keefe, 78 to 55. Game drifting away from the Tigers again. Jolly with the palm down. Schmidt. Free kick, it's Richmond's way. And a welcome one for Nathan Foley. He has struggled to get the, the, uh, the ball tonight, just seven possessions. From Colac, the same as Eamon Buchanan. Provided a few good players for the competition, Colac, in recent years. Luke Hodge, of course, one of them. Good to little push out on Cracker. Oh, and 50. And Adam gave Goods. the umpire a big spray. The Brownlow medals or not, Lynchy. That's cost him 50 <laughs> and probably a goal. And I'll tell you what, he hasn't missed him with the 50 either. <laughs> that is 75. That's a Brownlow medal 50. <laughs> oh, oh. That's a, I really didn't like what you just said then. That's been a good spray. <laughs> There's a go back and slot this one. The Richmond team can't let the, this de deficit get out any bigger. Each quarter, they've been able to respond so far. They have to do the same thing in the third to keep themselves in the game so that the Swans don't out-muscle them and run away with it. Only get the five goals this year. He's now got six. And Richmond oh, has a sniff. Been off the ball too. Plenty of happening off the ball as the Tigers players celebrate. Oh, they're into uh, Adam Goods. They are into him full on. Just a little reminder, I would suggest, uh, who helped contribute to the, the goal there. As we see, the push in the back to a young Cracker. And it was the this response that cost the 65 metre penalty. <laughs> Yeah, just one more look at the free kick. Look, that's just a bump in the middle of the back. Don't worry about using the hands. You just can't take a player out like that. And then he loaded up a couple of times. Fortunately, we're not lip readers. It's game on here. There's some aggro out there. And Jolly thumps it all the way to half forward. Clean ball to O'Keefe. Getting back, Newman. Shrugs one tackle. Boundary line a win for him. He gets it. He can't. Jude Bolton cuts it off to Malachewski. Barry Hall leads in his direction. McGuan missed the mark. O'Loughlin into trouble. Hall shrugs one tackle. Gives the don't argue. Gets caught. Kirk, McGuan. Crowd one ball. Don't get it. Gee, they're having trouble tackling Barry Hall at the moment. You just think they go too high. You've got to go around the waist, around the hips. Get him low and wrap yourself to his body because his upper body is just too big and strong. Everett. Perfect palm down to Fosdyke, lost it, got it back. O'Loughlin. King takes on Jolly, dropped it. Should have been gone. In the back, yeah. there's the square up. Was the square up. So Jude Bolton will line up on a tight angle, but he's kicked many from there before. Should have been a free kick for against Jay King because he, he took them on. It was a terrific tackle that dispossessed him and he didn't dispose of it correctly. Should have been a free kick. That was allowed to go on and then Jude Bolton just got the nifty one in the back. Still some words being spoken out there. Adam Goods being spoken to by the runner as well. Jude Bolton. Two goals, eight this year. That's good. He's made that look a little better. They've got so many players that are so solid on their shots on goal that they get half opportunities. I mean, that was... Your professional players will go back and kick these eight out of ten times. These guys don't miss. They make the most of it. See the rotations again. Bolton and Everett have come from the ground to have a spell. And the kick was probably there. This is getting ridiculous, Dwayne. I would love to see how many goal kickers tonight have immediately come from the ground. Jude Bolton joins the list. Must be near an instruction. If you kick yeah. one, just You've get You've got off. to come off. <laughs> as ridiculous as it sounds, I think that is it. <laughs> oh, kick a goal, they have to come off. It's four or five of them tonight at least. Matthews looks up and hits Jolly. They've got to hang tough now, the Tigers. Fosdyke, Davis, read it well. Too tall. 
Now, he's not a particularly tall player, Nick Davis, but Jay King giving away quite a bit of height. He had good position, King. He just didn't have the height to actually get his hands on the footy first. All of a sudden, you just get the feeling if they blow it out to a five-goal-plus margin, the Swans, that'll probably kill off the resistance of Richmond, and then it could really turn into any sort of margin. Well, he might not want to kick it because he knows he'll come off. <laughs> Swings it back. Off you come. He's got three. <laughs> He's resisting. He's going to stay and celebrate for a while. And uh, going to stay on the ground. But talk about professionals when they have a shot at the goals. And don't miss, Nick Davis is one of the straightest kicks for goal in the competition from around that 30, 40 metre mark. And that was just good position, was focused on the ball. And nice mark, nice goal. Richmond have to respond. 29 points. Three goals for Nick Davis, he gets to stay on. You got a feel for Jake King, it wasn't his man. He's manning uh, Schneider, but he just saw that Davis had got clear on the lead. And the ball up. Coming hard, Patterson dumped. Still over it, still trying. Brennan, he's brought down. And good to see Luke Brennan out there. First game for the Sydney Swans after 19 games for the Hawks. Had a knee operation about a year ago to try and fix his tendonitis. And back in action for the first time this year in the seniors. And he gets a possession on cue, Brennan. To Buchanan, slips it wide, Davis. Beaten for it by Newman. Hands off to another first gamer, Daniel Connors. First field. Uh -oh, no. Trouble. He might mess this up. Tackle laid. And dump McGuan. Kick around the body is okay. No, it's not. Bowden thought he had the boundary line. Good. Swallowed it. Gave it to Hall. Too far out to score. Centering kick. Perfect to Schmidt. Smith had lost his opponent in uh, general play and was just sitting inside 50 by himself. And it was smart play by a couple of the Swans players around him that led their opponents away from him, allowing him to be in that dangerous spot and be found by Barry Hall. Well, Tim Schmidt's another one of these accurate Sydney Swan goal kickers. He's kicked nine goals free this year. Spectacular. Well, now you just think that the Swans will be trying to turn it into a percentage boost, so they look to have broken the resistance of Richmond, who have been very good. And it was Daniel Connors was the opponent of Tim Schmidt, and he was involved in trying to make the play as they ran out of defence. Unfortunately, when the ball's turned over like that, you haven't got time to go back and pick up your man. It's Tim Schmidt sitting 45 out directly in front of goal, and costs you a goal. Poor skills. Ten goals, three now for the season for Tim Schmidt. This is game number 14 for the former West Adelaide player from Robertstown, where the Schmidts are a famous family. And you've got to love defenders too, because he was uh, 15 or 20 metres away, his opponent, Daniel Connors, because he'd been involved in the play. But no one stood the mark. No one <laughs> likes to claim the player that's about to have a shot. They say, no, you come and stand the mark, he's your bloke. 96 plays, 61. Played 23 minutes third term. And the ball up. Patterson got a palm on it. Down to Buchanan. Who gets it to, to uh, Brennan. Long kick. Davis might fly. Does. Can't mark it. Barry line looming. And King drags it away. Got one for his trouble with O'Keefe. Still in there. Doesn't mind a wrestle. Jake King, he was fine for wrestling Scott West earlier this year when they played against the Dogs. Fine 900 bucks. Schneider. Buchanan. Bevan. It's raining goals. It's raining goals and it's just the wear and tear, the strong bodies and the turnovers for Richmond have just taken its toll. And Terry Wallace very disappointed there. We just see Richard Tamlin going towards this contest. He goes one-handed. 
and he was very disappointed. And certainly uh, the direct opponent there, uh, I think it was uh, Schneider or Buchanan, went very hard at it, stayed on the line, took possession and set up the goal. Yet another convert to AFL from another sport, Paul Bevan, his great uncle Brian, the greatest rugby league try scorer of all time in England. And his father and grandfather also rugby league greats, but he chose this great AFL game and he gets it on cue. Gave it to Bolton. Free kick. Oh, over the shoulder. And it's the Swans ball. Everything going their way at the moment. Goods. Everett. Time to wait for it. And Schmidt lurking. Joel Bowden cut it off. Got no one to go too long, though. Finds a handball out to Nathan Brown. Has to go all the way from 50. Terrible. And the Swans crowd have found voice. 102 to 61. Well, Lynchy caller, there was no one to kick to. Richo was the only one going back long to the square. But at the other end of the ground, every time the Swans go forward, there's two, three, four lead-up targets that have started deep or that have run with the flight of the ball back into space. And just starting to outrun Richmond at the moment, the Swans. Buchanan didn't play last week, but back into the team this week. Home of Buchanan. Terrible kick. No, it's OK. McVeigh, back to Buchanan. Fosdyke just off the bench. But the difference there was that Richmond didn't make the uh, error pay. And certainly on, on the, uh, the other side, Richmond's errors have been capitalised on by the Swans with goals. Fosdyke just pokes it up for the Flyers. Barry Hall stayed down and gathered it. Hamels to Everett. He's got Brennan. He's got sights on the goal. Miss. He's starting to get a couple of touches, Luke Brennan. He's up to seven now. He'd love to get on the score sheet. He was pick eight for Hawthorne back in 2002, so... Just those persistent knee problems. Yep. Dwayne really curtailed his ability to do a pre-season, his ability to get a run of uninterrupted form. So if you're a top ten pick, you know you've got the skill. It's just whether injury is going to allow you to play to your full potential. And hopefully Luke Brennan can. Tuck. Sends it wide. Revolt. Just overran it. Buchanan. Grundy. Another player trying to keep his spot in this team. Not Schmitz, with kicks like that. Turnover terrible. Polak. Brown. Should kick it from there. He's already got three. Richo. One on one with Craig Bolton. He's another cold figure here, Craig Bolton. To Fosdyke. McVeigh, that's not good. Out of bounds on the full. Inside, three minutes to three-quarter time. Just had to capitalise on that error. I mean, Brown should have kicked the goal to start with, and Richo had a fair piece of it deep, but uh, wasn't quite a mark. Well, he's signalling something, Troy Simmons, by holding the ball up. I don't think you need to signal a back kick. You can see Joel Bowden's doing the same thing, so they're trying to get some sort of setup happening. It looks like a bunch yeah, they're gonna in the up. middle of the attacking 50 zone. But the problem there was the There's huddle enough, hadn't formed. Not enough discipline for the players to no, get in quickly. And uh, some of the younger players just broke too early. Kane Johnson. Almost within range and I'm not too sure that's to the plan. That's a uh, Hail Mary, that one. That is just, uh, I can't see anything. I'm just going to bomb it long and uh, well, someone put the saddle but on, even, But even if you're bombing it, bomb it to the top of the square, oh, exactly. not to the pocket and the goal line, and that's coming from the skipper. They've just got to be a little bit smarter. And the ball in. Buchanan lost it. Everett lost it. Revolt had it but lost it. Grundy's in there. Couldn't trap it. Tambling. Push, but no free. We'll get another ball up. Mentioned Heath Grundy trying to keep his spot. Three goals against Richmond at the SCG here last year. In round 16. Signalled his arrival to AFL footy. Got a Brownlow vote in that performance. Uh, behind. And there are a number of Sydney Swans just trying to hang on in this team with good form. There's been a couple 
in the twos like Vogels has been playing very well but can't get in. Now have a look at that kick. That is a 50 metre carry to hit Adam Goods at found space. No mark. Barry Hall thinks he held it long enough. Umpire said no. <laughs> so four goals for the night so far, Barry Hall. And the ball in. Jude Bolton. Pack of players fly. No one can bring the mark down. Polak had a lot of it. Connors with the handball wide. McGuan. Tries to don't argue. Got away with it. And now Reigns. Polak. Tamblin. Lead comes with Nathan Brown on the move. Malcheski thumped it down but to Newman. 60 from goal, pops it, and Edwards takes the mark. Have yeah, to kick from about 52. This will stretch him. Yeah, might just struggle with the distance. Comes from goal kicking jeans though. Shane Edwards, his father kicked 104 goals for Central Districts in the SANFL back in 1984. Star goal kicker there and an icon at Freeling in the Barossa Valley. And he knows how to kick him. That's a shocker. Everett cuts it off. And it's through for a behind. Getting a little ugly at the moment. 103 plays 62. You talk about me being proud of Tasmanians, Jase. <laughs> if anyone has visited South Australia, do I know or know about it? <laughs> State of Origin back next year. We're all looking forward to that. For one last time. Now Chesky. 17 seconds left on the clock. Just doesn't want to turn it over. And Adam Goods had the reach and the skill. And that should just about do us for three-quarter time. Sydney Swans still in contention for a top four spot. At the end of the home and away season, still a threat for the flag. The Tigers, of course, bottom of the AFL ladder. It's been a horrid season for the Richmond Football Club. The Swans just starting to find a little momentum heading towards September. 16-7-103 at three-quarter time. Plays 9-9-63. Seven goal, third term for the Sydney Swans, and they lead at three quarter time 16 7, 103 to 9 9, 63. A 40 point lead to the home team at the last change. Barry Hall's got four, Nick Davis has three, but they've got a good spread of goal scorers, and they are the numbers to three quarter time. It's been a good evening at the office for the Sydney Swan coaching staff, and one of them, John Blakey, is downstairs with Lee Colbert. Johnny. You're the forward coach, mate. You had a little bit to say to the boys uh, going into the three-quarter time break. Yeah, look, I thought we got a, a little bit lazy at times and, and didn't present and, and give the options as the guys were coming down the field. So it's just something we need to work on this quarter. Now, we're having a little bit of trouble working out when the boys kick a goal why they come straight off because one thing's for sure, A. Lynch and Jay Dunstall wouldn't be coming off the ground. Oh, it's just rotations, <laughs> mate. we just got to keep fresh legs out there. Good on you, Johnny. <laughs> He'd be happy, John Blakey, with their performance so far tonight. Sydney's last five games, they've got the Demons in Canberra next week. They'll get a good home crowd for that, even though it's a Melbourne home game. St Kilda at the Telstra Dome, the Brisbane at the Gabba, Collingwood at the Melbourne Cricket Ground, and then back here, round 22, Hawthorne at the Sydney Cricket Ground. So, tough last three games, four games for the Sydney Swans heading into September. Desperately needed these four points tonight. I don't think the four points is in question. It's just a matter now of what sort of percentage will they be taking with them. And a good opportunity for some of these young Tigers to learn how to fight out tough nights. 
because this could develop into an extremely tough night at the office. Yeah, well, they've challenged the first quarter, second quarter, they let it slip in the third, but must answer now in the last quarter. Jolly and Simmons in the ruck. Fly, Kirk, Goods, off his back to Grundy. Jude Bolton. Time to spend. Goods. He's chalking up the possessions, Adam Goods. This will be number 18 coming up, but... Look, you take your hat off to Andrew Raines. He's picked up 15 himself, and I think he's broken even. I don't think Goods has had a, a huge impact on the way the game's played out. Michael O'Loughlin, no mark paid. Just juggled it over the line there. Can't believe it. <laughs> Mickey thought, well, I've taken possession of the, uh, the ball, taken the mark, but uh, yeah, if you juggled over the line, it'll be a throw-in. Tried to talk Ray Chamberlain into it, but he's one of the best in the game, Ray. Wasn't going to fall for that. Jude Bolton. Pokes it towards Schneider. Out past King. Looks up and has Davis peeling off for him. Davis stays down and flies. Newman again pushed back hard. McVeigh. Canelli sped it before he earned it. Had to go back and get it again. And now Kirk. 103 plays 63. One of the all time. Sydney Swan superstars has the ball in his hands. Brett Kirk, if you're starting a new team from scratch, you'd almost pick him first. It's been such a start. Reigns. Well, Nathan Foley. Brown had pushed into space. Richo's got a duck back to the goal square. But he comes forward, misses him. One of the things I think Nathan Foley has to just be conscious of is sometimes he's so quick to have a bounce when he gets the ball to give himself time to run and carry. He's not looking upfield at the first available option, and Nathan Brown was clear in space. Ty Canelli finds Davis. He was sandwiched between Newman and Polak. Still marked it. And, and he'll line up for number four. He'll slot this one. It's just on his uh, distance, but uh, Richmond can get a lot out of this game if they can fight back and uh, grab a couple of goals off the Sydney Swans. The Sydney Swans are the best team in the competition as far as the, the way they go in with the strong bodies, tough around stoppages, and they just wear teams down. And Tigers certainly can get a lot out of it, but they have to respond in this last quarter and, and stop the rot. From 50, he gives it some night sky, hits the post. Well, umpire would have lost it. Only a behind, a rare behind for him. He's now kicked... 21 goals, 9 for the year. King. Long kick in, but straight to Fosdyke. And once again, the Tigers huddled up at centre half four, but they didn't have the discipline to hold the huddle, and it broke down. Barry Hall, lurking, had it, lost it. Bevan slips it to McVeigh. He's got Hall, thinks about it, don't argue. Like shelling peace. He's got five. And their split peas, the way things are starting to open up. Tigers are just starting to really leak like a sieve in their defensive half. The intensity's gone out of their game somewhat. And just too easy for the Swans. Barry Hall doesn't miss those in that sort of situation. Maybe they didn't even try to tackle Barry Hall on that occasion because they've tried to bring him down a few times and struggle to lay him on the turf. So... No pressure. Well, he's been sensational since they got him angry, Barry Hall. Mm. We're better off bringing him out a cookie than <laughs> calling him names. He's a real try, Jay King, but I don't think he kicks out uh, too often from the goal square and probably won't be after that last one. Jolly. Now on breaking free, we'll get another ball up. 110 plays 63. Lee Colbert. He's done pretty well, Lukey. Uh, McGuan, he's actually worked pretty hard on Barry Hall, even though he has got five and uh, did, did reasonably well in that third quarter. Didn't kick a goal in the third, Barry Hall. Jolly. Lines up. Did kick a goal in the third. Doesn't kick one here. Out of play on the full. As we speak, Jake King coming from the ground. He'll be replaced by Cleve Hughes. Tigers. Been under pressure all year, and under pressure again now. And it's their skill errors that continue to put them under more pressure, more than they should be under, Dwayne. Cracker takes the mark. 
Played for Coburg last week and gathered 33 possessions after being dropped and back into the lineup. Inside 50 towards Brown, who's been a live wire up forward. Tucked into the boundary line. A little bit of, I was going to say magic, but he didn't exactly pull a rabbit out of the hat there. Jolly. Kirk. He's got an era. Just hands it over to Canelli. To half forward to Jude Bolton. Brought down by Cracker. Nice tackle. Fosdyke shuffles it out. Canelli. Boundary line lurking. Kirk. Looks up and's got Hall. One grab, not the second. Free kick behind play. Jude Bolton will take it. On 50. Maybe just beyond his range. Never been All-Australian Jude Bolton. Never finished top three in the best and fairest here at the Swans, but it's always been a start. He lines up from 50. Centering kick. Big fly from Jolly. Can't bring the mark down. Hall thumps it out. Brennan's direction. First field, Brennan both over it. Umpire will sort it out. And he's hung in there, Luke McGuan, from Broadbeach originally, and certainly earned his dollars tonight. But that was a good spoil, the last forward 50 entry on Barry Hall. And he's a cousin of Mick, isn't he, for those that are curious? Oh, Even those from up there? I'd imagine so. Of course he is. From Foley's boot, it comes wide. Terrible kick, goods. Sends it inside, 50 towards Davis. Amazing. Well, they're starting to punish Richmond now every time they turn it over. It's coming back very quickly with interest, and they're finding loose targets in the attacking 50. Chris Newman's battled very hard tonight. He's picked up 23. He's also won a number of one-out contests with Nick Davis, but all of a sudden he's staring down the barrel of having four kicked on him. He probably doesn't deserve it. Just the midfielder, Richmond, just starting to walk. They haven't got the ability to get back and help out in the defensive half anymore. He's got three. He's now got four. And they are devouring them. And Nick Davis has had the 13 touches. But he doesn't need that many touches to really hurt you on the scoreboard. He's kicked the four goals. One, he's very efficient around the goals. And he's such a dangerous forward, small forward, to complement the power forwards of Barry Hall, Mickey O'Loughlin, so so good hasn't had a big night tonight just the five possessions but they take their turn and when it's time to stand up they more often than not do four goals now for nick davis it's hard to know where the umpires will look for brownlow votes for the swans goal kickers galore down one end as kirk gets the clearance winners in the midfield and you've got craig bolton at fullback is kept richardson goalless and a wide kick, perfectly placed to O'Keefe, who's lining up for his third. Whereas the youngsters in the first half had the enthusiasm and the, uh, the adrenaline rush to run with their opponents, they just haven't been able to do it, and they've been worn down, and we just saw there, just too many Richmond defenders trailing their opponents to the ball. 20 what he has in front of him, Brian O'Keefe. And he slides a little wide. And they're behind. 18 to 9, goals wise. 18, 9 to 9, 9. 117 to 63. And as Jason said earlier, percentage will be a factor for the Sydney Swans. It's going to be a big player in the final placings heading into the finals. And a big win here to the Sydney Swans and help them no end. Revolt hasn't seen a lot of it tonight. In fact, position number five to Richardson, who gets some jeers. It's been a tough night for Richo. Just possession number nine coming up. One behind to his name. Greg Bolton's been tremendous. Pumps it along. Chaos ball, hoping for the Flyers. Grundy off hands. Shrugs the tackle to Buchanan. And they're away. No one to go too long. Schmidt, Buchanan, bang, he's down. Handball turnover. Tambling. 
Foley's handball hit him, but he ran into trouble. First field. So it out to Patterson. Chip kick King. Inside 50, and Pettifer takes the mark. 40 metres out. She's got the youngsters in there. They just need the players like Deledio, Coglin, who's obviously been out with the two knee reconstructions. Those players just have got a few years under their belt and quality midfielders. They're just really missing them at the moment. She's had a good two or three years, came Pettifer, in recent times. The Tigers turned into a very reliable goal kicker. He's improved his fitness, his work ethic, and his accuracy in front of goals first class. He's already kicked one tonight, coming in for number two. And for number 30 for the season, Hardy misses, still on 29, Kane Federer. He was a top 10 draft pick back in 2000. He was pick nine. It's amazing how high he just kicked that ball. That was a ridiculous height to be kicking the footy. It's very similar to Nick Davis's oh, there uh, 10 minutes ago that's, at the other that's, end. I mean, they're the long goalposts up here, and that's gone <laughs> 10 to 15 metres above those on the way up. Turnover. It's a turnover, Nathan Brown coming hard. Grundy just as hard. Left it behind. Nathan Brown. Goods holds it up. Ball up. Played 11 minutes, final term here at the SCG. 11 plus time on to go. 117 to 64. Kind of scoreline you'd probably expect given the position of these two teams on the ladder. Schmidt's kick to the wing. High tackle. Not paid. And it's still on behind play. Moore and O'Keefe. Kick towards half forward. Pettifer beaten for it by Bevan. Got to his feet. Some brilliance to Buchanan. Matthews. O'Loughlin to the pocket. On the move. Got it. Hasn't had a big night, Mickey O. Back to Buchanan. And he doesn't like having shots all that often. Pops it up towards O'Keefe, use of the body, oh, Kelvin Moore. Well done, Kelvin Moore. He was in a very vulnerable, vulnerable position there. And O'Keefe was waiting for the ball to come down, but he pushed hard back and took the mark. Tuck. Sends it wide, Brevolt can't get there in time to make the contest on Schneider. Schneider's had a good night at the office as well. Short. Buchanan. Now Davis. And he'll line up for number five, Nick Davis. Pretty much been the story of the second half. Just the numbers streaming in with space in front of him. For the Sydney Swans. Nick Davis on that instance had pushed up the ground and just ran back with a flight into space. They're very disappointed leaving the space for the forwards or the midfielders to run into. One hundred and seventeen to sixty-four. A little more percentage. Oh. It's the post. He's kicked four two, Dwayne. Oh, four beautiful kicks and two that have hit the post. Mm. So he hasn't been far off, has he? <laughs> Some high rotations on the bench for the Sydney Swans, and yeah, they've had the luxury of resting Barry Hall for yeah. the last ten minutes or so. It's amazing. Tigers in defence. Coniston Newman. Wide and Kolak takes the mark at half back. Possession number 19 coming up for Graham Polak along the line towards Richardson. Threw a hand at it. Goods a bump on Cracker. Richardson back in. And we'll get a ball in. A couple of high fives, Brett Kirk and Adam Goods. Still playing their hearts out. Another good night for the Swans. It's uh, very much a shared workload. They don't even have anyone into the 20s in terms of possessions. We're halfway through the last quarter. Goods has 19, and then uh, a string of them in double figures. But no massive possession getters. They just have a very even contribution across the board. They all play their role. They all know their jobs. And they do it to the letter. Chris Newman, the number one possession getter, on the ground with 24. Tamling dives in, third man in. Goods wraps it up. And up by Craig Henry, earning his pay. Well, Newman just saw Nick Davis go from the ground and replaced by Barry Hall. And he's quickly calling <laughs> someone back. 
Polak coming over. Foley through traffic to Cracker. Backtracks. Foley. Pushed out of play by Schmidt. And we'll get a ball in on the wing. 118 to 64. Brett Kirk on screen. Back into play. Schmidt playing his heart out. Wants to stay in this lineup and maybe win a flag. Hasn't got one yet. Goods inside 50. Barry Hall. Fly at it. Down market. Brennan. A chance here. Oh, got by too high, high, surely. And he'll have it come back. Luke Brennan. He's a chance to kick his first goal for the Sydney Swans. Well, he worked hard. He tracked the footy. He kept it in front of him. And he was the one that had the head over the ball. It's his first game for the Swans after a handful for the Hawks, and he should come in and cap it with a goal. Began this season on the rookie list. He uh, did you know that what? three you know weeks what? ago on the reserves. I didn't want to say it, but he's not a particularly great kick. <laughs> I didn't want to say it prior to that, but gee, have a look at it. Here he is putting his head down and just over the top, Newman. Soft, but it was there. What do I think uh, actually got in his head? There was, no one on the well, there was no one on the Swans player on the goal line, and there was a chance to be handballed over the top, so the man on the marks dropped back, and I think that's got in his head. Trying to make amends. Hands off to Barry Hall instead of having a shot. Good option. Barry Hall has six. That's a good return for Barry Hall. He's been at his vigorous best tonight, and he's challenged by the youngsters, the young defenders, which was great to see. But uh, so often we've seen tonight, especially in the second half, how the turnovers, the poor skill execution of the uh, Richmond youngsters has caused turnovers and caused goals for the Sydney Swans. They've been too solid, the Swans, all night, too consistent, too hard. Good lesson to be learnt there for uh, young Daniel Connors. He's been impressive tonight, 12 possessions. But he tried to do a little hand pass to himself in defence under pressure. That might work in the junior grades, but the Swans are professional. They put the ball carrier to ground, didn't have a chance to recover. Cleve Hughes poked the mark inside 50. And he has a chance to kick his second of the night. Just didn't five possessions for him. The one goal being a, a quiet night, one of a few for the Tigers, Duano. I have to mention it, Lynchy is a South Australian as well. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Birdwood in the Adelaide Hills. You'd know his family, wouldn't you, Dwayne? From Nord and from the same club up there as Scotty Burns and the James brothers, a couple of premiership winning South Australians. And he lines up and wallpapers over a few Richmond cracks. He's got two. Very good set shot for goal, Cleve Hughes. A very simple, efficient technique. There's a quick clearance out of the middle. Andrew Cracker. Just a, a reasonably rare touch for him as well. And playing in front. That's where the forward should be for the quick kick. It's a beautiful approach and a good finish. He's done some handy things in just the nine games he's played. And uh, it takes a, takes a good mark. And as you said, a uh, very effective shot on goal. Sixth possession, second goal for Cleve Hughes back in the Richmond lineup tonight. 125 plays 70. It's been over for a while. Nice bounce. Patterson thumped it down to Tambling. Handball missed the target. Kirk. Everett. Through traffic. Well measured kick. Fosdyke. Looks up and he's got Barry Hall short. Dumped away from him, Kirk. Stolen from him, Thursfield, Reigns, Pettifer. Lead comes from Richardson. Tough one to mark. Oh, Does mark, mark it though, 50 from goal. It wasn't a good kick. It sat Richo under the ball. He got away from Craig Bolton. Poor kick just sat him under it, but he's a big man, held his ground and took a juggled mark. He can kick the distance, that's for sure. He should go back and try to slot this one. He hasn't got one tonight, Matthew Richardson. Gives that one some air as well. High kick, offline. Only behind, so in danger of finishing the night. Goalless, 41 for the year. Didn't have a great 250th last week. 
Played on the losing side last week, of course, but did kick four goals, even though he was well beaten on the day. Ticking to time on, final term. Jude Bolton to Grundy. Good mark, Pettifer over him. No 50, and we'll go back. Fosdyke. Speaking of Norwood boys. It's about to thump it long. And wide. O'Keefe and Hall down there. O'Keefe and Barry Hall both screaming for a free. <laughs> Barry. Well, I don't think he's going to get upset now when he's got <laughs> uh, half a dozen next to his name and yeah. we're just playing out the last five or six minutes of the game. I think a little wry smile from Barry tops it off. Kirk around the body misses. Only behind. You don't see the right foot from Brett Kirk too often. It's probably why. But he's claimed another victim. He certainly touched up Nathan Foley tonight. Kick in. McGuan. Tambling. Drag down. Kane Johnson. Tuck. Rain. No, it's Foley, in fact. Back to Kane Johnson. Short to Richo. All the way up to the wing. Crowd giving him some more jeers, telling him to hurry up. Wide to Revolt. So on the ball up, there's big numbers back for the Sydney Swans, as they always do. So we're looking for Matthew Richardson. And he gets on the end of it. And the only thing from 65 metres out, he's really got to look for himself at the top of the goal square, but there's no one else up there. Too crowded just to bomb it. So he bombs it. Barry Hall, what's he doing back there? Well, they're that discipline, they had all 18 players on the ground, the Sydney Swans, in their defensive 50, and made it very hard, although the game's over, they choked it up. Davis got it from Jolly, sends it long, Schmidt and Brennan inside 50, Thursfield makes a contest, McGuire. Chips it back. Bowed to Tambling in space. Little bounce and decides not to go short to Polak. Runs into Buchanan and straight through him. Another bounce. Richardson calls for it long. In his direction. Craig Bolton slips. Oh. Still sport him whilst on his backside. I thought he was going to take a simple mark, Richard, but it's gone just straight enough, through. Enough distraction that it slips straight through the bread basket. Grundy out wide to Fosdyke. He's got Schmidt. Now Davis inside 50, or O'Keefe, either. O'Keefe marks on the line. He'll do something very professional here. He'll just pick off a, a short pass or slot the goal himself. But he seems to think his way through as good as anyone. And look at Matty Richardson going back with the flight. Got rid of Bolton. Just well, there's Nathan Brown coming across in front. There's that professional thing you oh, were talking oh, about from Ryan O'Keefe. He was always going to do that after you wrapped him up, Lynchy. He's normally so good. <laughs> He's just hasn't looked like kicking that. He's had a ping from it, it row six. <laughs> Very professional. <laughs> so they've been smashed a couple of times recently by Sydney Richmond. And they'll be smashed tonight, round 16 last year. 48 points, an easy victory here to Sydney. Round 7 last year, it was 118 points when they kicked 28 goals to 9. Well, it's currently 19 goals to 10. Everett lurking, had a good start to the game, but beaten for it by the debutant Daniel Connors. We've got the Demons in Canberra next week. The Swans next Sunday. Mm, boundary. Out of bounds on the full. Inside three minutes to full time. Brennan called to play on. This wobbles it to the hot spot. Schneider was there, thumb clear of him by Bowden. Simmons slips, getting a little slippery out there. Pettifer handles straight to Grundy. Now Buchanan. Kirk. McVeigh thought about it. 
back into the corridor. Oh, There's boy. that discipline. Gee, they've missed some tackles tonight, the Tigers, haven't they? They've had their hands on the Sydney player with the ball, but well, they haven't been able to either wrap them up or dispossess them and certainly not throw them to the ground. It's certainly a, a strength issue, but um, it looks like there's a fair bit of technique that needs to be taught into the youngsters. They're just reaching in with the hands, yeah. getting pushed off too easily. Adam Schneider's kicked one tonight. Never in doubt. Lovely. Well, for the first two and a half quarters of the match, the Tigers looked to be a very competitive unit. And you'd probably say they were going to have a very respectable performance here tonight at the SCG, but 10 goal margin, as you say, that's what we expected. Doing it pretty easily now, running in numbers, the Swans, and making it up as they go. There's the fend-off, the chip into space, loose players filling the holes. Two goals to Adam Schneider, local New South Wales product from Osmond, and the New South Wales ACT under-18s. Ball up. Inside two minutes to full time. Ty Canelli, good to see him back and uninjured tonight. And Schneider can line up again. Well, that was nearly an uncontested mark with players around. Gee, Adam Woods is working hard. He wants it. He's led three <laughs> times and he's yelling, he's screaming, he's frustrated because Reigns is running with him everywhere. Schneider from 50. But you're not needed, Adam. Too many legs for Schneider, man. They're just all starting to come together for the Sydney Swans and at the same time fall apart for Richmond. They hung in there well and they answered the challenge each time the Sydney Swans got out to that three or four goal margin. They bounced back, but it's been all too easy in the second half and something we've seen here at the SCG on a regular basis over the last two months. The Sydney Swans, a bit slow out of the blocks, the challenge, but they bounce back and have good wins by the end of the game. Probably uh, a bit of an omen when we first got to the ground, Duana. We watched the State League game taking place here, and it was the Swans reserves over the Tigers by 130 points. That was the Queen Bean Tigers that the Swans touched up, and it was either you or Lynchy that joked that could be the score in the main game as well. I'm not sure who it was, but it hasn't quite got that bad. But it's starting to look pretty sick now with an 11 goal margin. Siren can't come quickly enough for both teams, really. Swans don't need any more injuries, and Tigers don't need any more goals scored against them. And it was only that close because Queanbeyan didn't miss a shot on goal. <laughs> about 12 straight. <laughs> Tuck. Bowden couldn't grab it. Foley does. Back into the corridor. Spears it inside 50. Revolt. And that's why they're playing the young fella. Because he's got a fair amount of talent to jump and take marks like that. And uh, his uh, investment in the future, Jack Rewalt, played a lot of footy against his dad back in Tassie, and he was a big ruckman forward for Clarence. And uh, Jack looks like he's well and truly on the way to be a key forward in the AFL. He goes back to the Michael Holding run-up, doesn't he? His cousin of St Nick, of course. Jack Rewalt wearing Tom Roach's old number eight this year. And he sprays it behind. So it'll be a commanding and convincing victory to the Sydney Swans. They've owned this game since half-time. They're only led by 16 points at half-time. But it's been all Sydney since then. And what diverse fortunes these two teams have had since it was only a 16-point result when they met in round two. The Tigers, bottom of the ladder, and having one of their worst seasons on record. The Sydney Swans back in the firing line for a top-four spot. They've played in the last two AFL Grand Finals, Sydney, and who's to say they won't be there again? Well, it's the right time of year to be finding a bit of form for the Swans, isn't it? Paul Roos, I think, is notorious for taking it easy early in the season. They have uh, j just an easy 
approach to the early games. They're not fussed if they haven't got all their players 100% up and running and flying and make sure they get over their injuries in the off-season. They don't flog them pre-season because they know the business end of the, uh, of the season is certainly July, August, September. And you just see some signs that the Swans are starting to get a little bit of momentum going again. Six goals, one for Barry Hall tonight. Four goals to Nick Davis. And there was another bloke who did pretty well up forward as well. And he's downstairs with Lee Colbert. He did very well. Rhino, uh, great win by the boys. A real team effort, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, you know, it was a little bit of a danger game. You know, Richmond can uh, score and score quickly. So we really um, made it focus to knuckle down and, and, and make sure we uh, get away with a good win. And the four line really functioned well with Big Baz back in town with six goals. Yeah, of course, you know, it's good to have Baz back. And um, I think we're just starting to uh, click together and now. So a few more games and, you know, hopefully keep winning and, um, you know, give a real shake in the finals. And your own form, four goals last week and today you're just, uh, you know, running up and down the ground. Everyone raves about about this tank of yours. How good is it, mate? You're, uh, you're just amazing. You seem to uh, be everywhere at times. Oh, I don't know how good it is. It's, uh, you know, <laughs> some solid pre-seasons under the belt now and just, you know, just work hard. It's just our motto. That's the club's motto. So, uh, you know, just keep chipping away. Enjoy the win and good luck next week with uh, Melbourne and Marnica. Yep, that no, should be a tough one. Thanks. <laughs> He's a very, very humble man, Ryan O'Keefe. And I thought a very respectful statement, Dwayne, when he said, a bit of a danger game tonight. Please. When did he say that? <laughs> At the beginning, he said, oh. danger game. They were going to smack him from start to finish. Well, unfortunately, Sydney were only 16 points up at half time, and we got excited about seeing a contest that might last until the final siren. They stuck this in a little, Richmond. Seven points down at quarter time, 16 points down at half time, and they had some sparks in the first half that got all of us a little excited, but the Sydney Swans are just a class outfit. And you mentioned how good they're playing at the right end of the season. Well, injuries aren't a problem for them as much now as they were about round four or five. They were starting to have players out. And would they have won the flag last year had they had Peter Everett last year? Well, he would have been a very handy uh, player. You're not sure how he was with fitness and yeah. uh, where his footy was at, so it's a hard one. But, but it's been uh, a great addition for them this year, so all of a sudden they've improved a little bit as well. Well, they've got a player that's very smart around the centre of the ground and can push forward and add as a weapon up forward and kick goals with Hall, O'Loughlin, O'Keefe, Davis. The list goes on. They're in good form at the right time of the season and just slowly just tweaking up the accelerator. Led by one of the great captains of the competition, Brett Kirk, and the rotating basis. Big win to the Sydney Swans tonight, back in contention for the top four. 21 goals, 12, 138 to Richmond, 10, 12, 72.